In our dark story today, a woman leaves work to run an errand during lunch and is never seen again. It's the most out of character behavior for this young woman which leads her co-workers to believing that something awful must have happened. It takes a series of surveillance cameras and a voice mail to crack this case wide open and reveal the unimaginable. For Madison, a beautiful dental hygienist, Austin, Texas was the perfect city for her new family. She had just settled into a new house and loved her job. All of her co-workers loved to brag about how organized, thorough, and loyal she was. One Wednesday afternoon, when she told everyone that she was taking an early lunch to handle some personal matters and never returned, everyone knew something had to be wrong. Madison took her early lunch break at 11 o'clock to run to her mother's house and use her computer. She needed to scan and send some information to her mortgage company. By the time one o'clock approached, and she hadn't returned to work, Madison's boss tried her cell phone several times. Those calls all went straight to voicemail. All of her co-workers were wondering if she could have possibly been involved in some type of accident. Or worse, could she have been the victim of foul play? So her boss decided to place a call to her mom, Linda, to ask if she had heard from her daughter. Linda was out taking care of Madison's son at the time. She explained that she hadn't heard from her daughter since that morning when she asked about coming by to use her computer during her lunch hour. Two detectives met up with Linda at her house to see if anything looked out the ordinary. After seeing no signs of forced entry or a struggle, they turned their attention to the computer she came home to use. They pulled up all the activity that was logged. Together, they discovered that Madison did indeed use the computer as she planned to that day. They recovered the documents recorded at 11.20 that morning. So now investigators know that Madison did make it to the house and complete her task. But the question still remained, why didn't she return to work that afternoon? Next, the detectives decided to travel along the same route that Madison would have taken that day. They were hoping to find something that stuck out or could assist with the investigation. They did notice a gas station that seemed to be right at the halfway point between the two locations and, luckily, they had surveillance cameras. So, they reviewed the footage starting at 11 o'clock. As they watched patiently, they finally saw Madison's white car pass a little bit after 11, heading toward her mom's house, as expected. But it wasn't until a little bit over an hour later, they saw something strange. Madison's car came barreling across the right side of the camera frame, traveling through a parking lot, before hastily pulling into traffic. It almost appeared like the driver was trying to elude someone. The only problem was, even when the footage was slowed down, you couldn't make out who was in the car. So, unfortunately, this footage didn't help much. A big break in the case came when Madison's car was found abandoned in a parking lot, not far from her work. As detectives searched for clues inside the car, they saw that the keys were left on the floor and the seat had been pushed back, indicating that the driver was over six feet tall. Detectives also discovered that a building directly across the street from the parking lot had a surveillance camera pointing directly at the car. After investigators reviewed hours of footage, they finally noticed Madison's car pull into their view from the street. As they watched patiently, a man stepped out of the car, closed the door, and walked into the adjacent parking garage. He looked strikingly similar to Dale, Madison's stepfather. And then minutes later, a pickup truck is seen exiting the parking lot. Investigators were surprised to see the truck had a unique racing stripe design running along its side, making it a vehicle that would be easier to locate. The next morning, Linda called the two detectives, asking them to come back to the house. She stumbled on something very puzzling that she had to show them. When detectives arrived, Linda had discovered a message on her answering machine that was left by her daughter the day she went missing. 
Madison's message stated that she had just pulled up to the house and that she saw Dale's truck in the driveway. She wanted to make sure that he knew that she was coming by to use the computer. Linda told detectives that Dale had sworn that he was never home that day. Upon hearing this, detectives decided to pay Dale a visit at work. As soon as they pulled into the parking lot they noticed a pickup truck with the same exact design that they saw in the surveillance footage. When they discovered that the truck belonged to Dale, detectives told him that he needed to come into the police station for questioning. Once investigators got Dale into the room, they asked if he saw Madison the day she went missing. He insisted that he hadn't seen his stepdaughter that day. They asked where he was between the hours of 11 and 1. He said that he had been at work all day. They played the voice message, and the video showing his truck exiting the parking lot. They informed him that they were gathering DNA from Madison's car. Dale continued to deny seeing his stepdaughter on that day. After three hours of heated questioning, Dale finally cracked and told investigators a sinister story. Dale said that over the last few months he had become obsessed with Madison in a lustful way. When she arrived at the house, he said she looked so seductive, he couldn't control himself. He waited for her to finish her task and then snuck up behind her. He had brought a metal cable which he used to choke her to death. He took Madison's dead body to the bedroom, disrobed her, and sexually assaulted the body as he filmed it. He told detectives that he had a necrophilia sickness. He said this wasn't his first time. To avoid the death penalty, Dale took investigators to Madison's body so that her family could give her a proper burial. Dale would eventually stand trial and be sentenced to life in prison without parole.